You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday 21st March and I'm Brendan from Milford. Globally, the key piece of economic news this week was the FOMC. The Fed continued with their hawkish pivot, hiking rates by 25 basis points and outlining a dot plot which indicated a median estimate of seven hikes this year. Importantly, there were seven policymakers that had dots above 1.875% and one dot as high as 3.125% by the end of 2022. This suggests there are some on the committee that see a significant front-loading of policy tightening this year. Immediately after the decision, equity markets faded given the steeply front-loaded projections. However, during the press conference, Powell insisted that the economy and labour market were strong and that it would be able to withstand rate hikes. The S&P 500 went on to finish the session 2.24% higher the biggest one-day gain since April 2020. In other global news, the ramifications of ongoing conflict in Ukraine continue to weigh on markets. The London Metal Exchange reopened trading in nickel this week after suspending trading on March 8 following a 250% price spike over a 24-hour period following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The LME had installed circuit breakers in an attempt to control volatility. However, these didn't work and nickel immediately traded through them. The implications of such disorderly markets are widespread given the large margin calls being required for speculators and hedges who had short positions in the middle. To provide context, in the US they still have 5 cent coins called nickels, which are composed of 25% nickel and 75% copper. At the current prices for these commodities, the mount value is worth about 10 cents or double its face value. The other interesting global development this past week was the extreme volatility seen in Chinese equity markets. This was driven by a myriad of issues such as regulatory change, new lockdowns in China following recent COVID outbreaks, and geopolitical conflict as the FT reported Russia had asked for China's military assistance in Ukraine. At the end of the week, Chinese policymakers vowed to ensure stability in capital markets, support overseas stock listings, and complete the crackdown on big tech. This saw the Hang Seng China Enterprise Index rally 12.5% on Wednesday, following two days of 67% declines, finishing the week 4% higher. Closer to home, we had Australian labour force data out for February. It was a bumper print, with employment increasing by 77.4 thousand versus consensus at just 40 thousand, with full-time appointments rising 122 thousand, offsetting a weaker part-time creation of minus 44 thousand. The unemployment rate fell two tenths to four percent, the lowest level since 2008. Further, labour supply also surprised to the upside, with participation up two tenths at 66.4 percent, a new all-time high. This economic strength saw the Australian dollar rally against the US dollar breaking through the key 200-day moving average to finish the week at 0.7415 cents. This data will provide the RBA with confidence that wage growth is set to accelerate, which they outlined as one of their key pieces of data to see before hiking rates. In equity news, Unity Group confirmed recent media speculation that they had entered into exclusive discussions with Morrison & Co. to sell their business. The preliminary cash consideration of $4.50 represents a 12% premium to the latest close price and 42.8% premium to previous day's close. Shares of Star Entertainment fell as much as 7% on Friday before closing the day down 3.6% after evidence that an inquiry centered around anti-money laundering breaches at their Sydney casino raised concerns the site's gaming license may be taken away. Finally in stock news, Abacus Group announced a fully underwritten $200 million capital raise at a price of $3.56, which represents a 5.1% discount to the last close price. The proceeds will be used to fund their storage development pipeline and replenish capacity to make investments. In the week ahead, we'll continue monitoring developments around geopolitics and the ensuing implications for markets. It's a quieter week on the data front, but we'll be looking at UK CPI to gauge the impact from higher energy prices, where the market expects a print of 6%. We'll also be looking at New Zealand credit card spending to get a read on the consumer. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again next week.